Lord is doing here. If you download the band app to Fontana Gathering, then you'll be able to be updated with what is taking place on the calendar. So Wednesday nights, we have Epic South Group that takes place at King of Kings Barbershop. So they're at King of Kings Barbershop. So we do Epic uh, Group. It's a South Group. And we get together and we speak. Uh, whatever we, uh, Most of the time, we just flow with the Spirit. Yeah. Whatever the Spirit is doing at that moment Amen. as we come in. And just as an amazing testimony, there was an accident that took place with, with our sister over here and our brother's son over here. But God miraculously used it to bring in, you know, our brother. So everything that takes place is not coincidence. You know, God is always on the move and he's always making moves. And we're part and we are part of those moves. We are his vessels and he uses us in move making. So we thank you, Jesus, for using us continually. Yes. So 6 p.m. we do um, cell group there at the barber shop, King of Kings Barber Shop. Yes, Jesus. Also, just keep um, keep our outreach in prayer, August 19th. Yes. I'm actually looking through the band app right now to look at the upcoming <laughs> events. So August 19th, we have our Christ Be Magnified event that's taking place. So we want to keep in prayer for um, finances, but not also for finances, but also for salvation. Most salvation. importantly, okay. salvation. The reason why we're praying for financing is because we want to be able to seal the building here. And this way we can use this facility here to preach the gospel in different ways. Amen? Amen. So pray for the event taking place August 19th. Christ be magnified. Mm. And then also I believe there's, I skipped to August, but if we go back a few weeks to August 4th, on the band app, you'll see that we have a movie night taking place at Pastor and Andrew's pad. Yeah. So Pastor Andrew and Marlena, we're going to be having movie night, and that starts at 7.30 p.m. That's pretty cool. It's a little late because the sun's a little off. Yeah, that's and it's outside. And I was like, all right. So if you're interested, the address is on the band app. So you remember, download the band app and you get updated with all the information. So don't forget, if you're interested in laughter for all, sign up out there so we know who's all attending. And I'm going to go ahead and give the mic to you. Amen. God bless you guys. Yeah, it's a Friday night. It's a Friday morning. Uh, we're going to read out of Deuteronomy 16, 17. It says, every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord your God. That have that he has given you. So it's just really simple. It's a little simple one, simple verse. Now uh, it's just uh, bless what you've been blessed with. So uh, we just uh, thank you and honor you right now, Father God, for for the blessings you have given us, Father God. And Father God, the offerings that we're going to give, Father, will be able to bless those that don't have, Father God. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we give you all glory, give you all honor, and all praise to you. In Jesus' name, Amen. amen. You can come on up and. Uh, Bring your uh, tithing up. You got it. Um, let me and for offerings, you, you can go to Zell the Gathering Fontana at gmail dot um, 0287 is the phone number for Zell or Cash App at the Gathering Fontana. I just make a check to the Gathering, and uh, we appreciate what you guys can give because it's going to help the people in the community. So, uh, the Greek souls and stuff like that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Pastor Andy, he's on. Oh, excuse me, Pastor Andy. <laughs> uh, I I'm roll now. I, 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 heard, I, heard, I heard Brother Moses the other day say that he's moving from the sideline to the front row. That's right. Come on. Right. Come on. Come on. It's time. Awesome. I heard Brother Moses say moving from the sideline to the front row. That's right. That's right. You know, at the end of the day, God wants us to get out of our comfort zone. He doesn't want us to be comfortable. He wants us to be comfortable in Him, but He doesn't want us to be too complacent in our walk. If this makes sense. The Lord truly wants us to get off the sideline and be front runners for the kingdom of God. Because it takes a willing vessel to do those things. And it starts with self. 
And I heard what that word said. It's like, don't worry about the atmosphere and things that are going on. Because God just works through worship when we tap in. Amen? Amen. His presence comes heavy. The presence of the Lord falls upon us. And all these good things just start happening in the midst of worship. I was amazed just to be able to enter into those, some of those songs that I haven't sang in a long while. Yeah. It felt really good and reviving, you know, to be able to tap into the spirit and allow the Lord just to minister to me. Amen. So if we have any children this morning, we can release them. <laughs> I do it all the time, too. Sometimes we forget to release the children. <coughs> but do me a favor. Say nothing, nothing can separate me can separate from, the love of God. from the love of God. And that's very true. Yes, yes. We have an adversary, an enemy, a foe. That's very tactical in the way he operates. Very tactical in the way he operates. He's a liar and he's the father of lies. And he's a deceiver. And he likes to accuse people day and night. But the reality of it is, is that those that are born again have something that he can never have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's been kicked out of heaven. Yeah. Cast down like lightning. And he can never receive the love of God himself. He's predestined to be changed in a bottomless pit. That's his destination, and he knows that. But at the end of the day, he knows how to manipulate people through people. But because of the truth of the gospel and the good news that we carry, it's almost like ammunition in a war. For sure. There was a brother by the name of Brother Brian. He said, I'll, I'll hit him with the clip of hallelujahs. Amen. You know, I come from the streets, and then a lot of us may hear, I know my brother does, but we know what that means, a cliff. And a cliff is not meant for good things, but it's meant to harm and destroy and to kill. And that's the enemy. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Amen? Yes, yes. But what do we have our defense? It's the word of God. Sharper than a two-edged sword. Amen? Sure. This word right here will defeat the lie of the enemy. Yes, it does. The righteousness of who you are in Christ Jesus, regardless of where you're at in your walk, it's already been paid upon the cross and it's finished. But you're in the Christ and in the righteousness of Christ Jesus. So with that breastplate, everything that he throws at us, every lie and every tactic, whatever that may look like, will not, will not destroy you or harm you. The only way it can destroy you and harm you is if you grab a hold of the lie from the devil. Or you allow that dart to penetrate your heart and let it to start to do what it does. Right. Something just came to mind right now is that on that end of the dart is poison. Sure. You see movies, right? They shoot darts in the old times, right? The Aztec days, whatever. Like maybe they didn't have ammunition then, but they had arrows and bowheads and all these different things. But what they would do is they would dip that arrow in some type of poisonous root or poisonous insect or poisonous whatever that may look like. But they would put poison at the tip of the arrow. Yeah. This ain't the teaching, but I'm going to flow. On the tip of the arrow. And they used it against their adversaries to take them out. And that's exactly the goal of the devil himself. Satan. Lucifer. His goal is to take out as many as people that he can because he wants to take them to a place that he knows that there's no destination or eternity with, with the Father. Is this making sense? We serve a mighty God, all-powerful. Greater is he that's in us than he that is of the world. So regardless of every spirit that's roaming the land across the world nationwide, the spirit of God and the kingdom of God that is in us is greater than anything of the world. Sure. The spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead is in you. Yep. Sometimes we forget that God dwells here in this place. I love the analogy that Pastor Mark did last week. He said God was in a box in the Old Testament and they used to carry him everywhere he went. Yep. That was a good analogy. I just pictured it. I said, man, God was an actual box with back in the Old Testament. And they would carry them everywhere they went. And I love that analogy because 
This is true. This is exactly how they carried him. Two people in the front, two people in the back. But how many know that we can't keep God in the box? Yeah. He's too big for a box. Just think about it really quick, how big God is. That his spirit indwells in all the believers across the world. That don't make sense to the natural mind. You're like, at one point, Lord, you're in a box, and at one point, your spirit came down, and at one point, people were prophesied, right, Old Testament, but now that what Christ Jesus did upon the cross, he's in every believer? Right. Like, how did you take a piece of your spirit and just distribute it, distribute it freely? I don't know, but he's a big God if he can do that, amen? Amen. Omnipresent. He's omnipresent. Everywhere. Everywhere. Omnipotent, all powerful. Nothing can stop the Lord from what He has for each one of us in our lives. We, as people, just have to humble ourselves, amen? Right. And surrender right. and give it all to Him. Yeah. And give it all to Him. I'm learning to give everything that is not of Him to Him. And that's what we all should be, amen? Very true. Very true. So today, we're going to be talking about sanctification, being sanctified. And the reason I felt like this really came up in my spirit is because we've had a lot of baptisms recently over the last month. There's many people that proclaimed and said, hey, I'm dying to my old self and I'm going to pick up my cross and I'm going to follow Jesus. And going in that water, I'm dying to myself. I'm coming out a new creation. And I'm going to start to learn the word of God. I'm going to start to become disciples of my teacher in heaven, the Holy Spirit, the best teacher of all. And I'm going to sharpen iron with my brothers and sisters. And no matter what comes up against me, I'm going to stick to this thing because that's the choice that I made to follow Christ Jesus and keep my eyes upon the cross. Amen. That's what we did when we got baptized. We chose to be baptized because we don't want to live that old lifestyle anymore. That old lifestyle and that old person is gone. And you have to truly believe that. You have to truly believe that. That the old man is dead. Say dead. dead. Who? The old man. Old woman. <laughs> old man, right? But we're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. But there's something that happens within us after we become born again. And it's a thing called sanctification. And what it means is this, is that we've been made right in Christ Jesus. Say right. Right. Because of his righteousness. Amen? Yes. But the problem with it is that we do, we truly have flesh that's alive. Say flesh. Flesh. But because we've already been made right in the sight of the Father through Christ Jesus, you are righteous people. I'm a righteous man because of what Christ did upon the cross for me with his precious blood. Mm. Like... I'm no longer bound to sin. My sins have been washed as far as from the east to the west. Right. But there's this flesh that I will be in war against till the day that I leave this place called earth. Sure. Till this dirt, this flesh goes back to dirt and what we were created in, then I'll be freed from the nature of sin. Is this making sense? Like there's this thing called the nature of sin that's alive and well that tries to defeat us outside of the kingdom of darkness. And when you, what do you mean, Pastor Andrew, when you say outside of the kingdom of darkness? Well, that's a whole separate battle within oneself. Pushing down the lustful desires. Pushing down the jealousy that may rise within the old man. Pushing down the bitterness that tries to grow in. Those are things that are foundational and found within the soul. So the enemy's tactical. And he wants to penetrate people's hearts with the poison of who he is. A liar. Right. But in the sanctification process, we grow. Say grow. Grow. This is the goodness of our Father. If you have grandbabies, children, you know you get to see your children grow. You get to see them be birthed. You get to cut the umbilical cord. Some people do, some people don't. Maybe they have them C-section, whatever. But the children are a blessing. But you see children just grow. And what I've recognized is that in the body of Christ, sometimes we don't recognize who's growing and where they're at in their walk. But the Lord teaches us to be compassionate and love and full of joy. 
And then it takes the wisdom of God for us to be able to crush those that need nutrient. Amen? Amen. But the devil's tactical. He gets into the minds of people, or I won't even say the minds of people. He speaks to people's ear, and he gets them to believe something that's not true of that person. This is why it takes eyes to see, ears to hear, right? Because when we have the eyes of the Lord, of our Father, you'll see past the shortcomings and the shortfalls of people that are not in full awareness or understanding of who they are in Christ Jesus. This is why Brother Moses is always saying we need to come into unity, and he's growing in that area himself. This is why I say, hey, we're the body because the Bible says the body, that the body can't function without certain other areas of the body. Amen? Right. Don't let the devil lie to you as an individual. Recognize the voice of the enemy and recognize the voice of our Lord and Savior. Recognize the Holy Spirit when he speaks. Recognize the Holy Spirit when he speaks. Let me give you the definition of sanctified. It's to make holy, set apart, as sacred, consecrate, to purify, or to free from sins. And it also says at the very bottom of the definition, to sanctify your heart. So think about that for a moment. Sanctified means you've been set apart. You are no longer part of the kingdom of darkness. He separated you from that and put you and placed you and myself into the kingdom of light. Into the kingdom of light. Say, I'm holy. I'm holy. We are holy people. But ideally is that we have to pursue the holiness of Christ Jesus. That's why when he says, deny yourself, pick up your cross, that means you have to deny everything that is unholy in oneself. You got to pick up your cross and you have to suffer and endure just like Christ Jesus did carrying the cross. If this makes sense. It's painful, it's hurtful, sometimes we don't understand it, but ideally is in that place of denying oneself and pursuing the things of righteousness with your eyes upon the cross, you're being sanctified. You're allowing the Lord to minister to you within your heart, which is circumcision of the heart. You're allowing the Lord to minister to your mind, which is the renewal of the mind, which gives you a sound mind. You're allowing the Lord to be giving you peace in the midst of whatever may be being spoken against you. Like sanctification is a good thing, yeah. but it starts right there to understand that, hey, I've been set apart. I'm not the old man. I'm a new creation in Jesus, and I'm no longer part of darkness, but I'm part of light. And because I'm part of light, I'm holy in Christ Jesus, but in my walk with the Lord, no matter where I'm at, I'm being purified as gold. Amen. He's the refiner. Yes, he is. Right. He's the refiner. Yep. And I like that portion of the definition where it says to purify or to free from sin. We're being purified. Even though we're not found guilty for our sins because they've been washed, we are still being purified within this stuff right here. And this right here in our daily walk. Is this making sense a little bit? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So here's some notes. Sanctification is God's will for us. The word sanctification is related to the word saint. Okay. Isn't that amazing? Wow. That it relates to us, the saints. Sanctification is only for the believer in Christ Jesus. Mm. Say saint. Saint. Yes. When the saint come marching in. Oh, when the saint come marching in. That's you. Yeah. We're talking about marching into the kingdom of God. Yeah. You're being sanctified in your step. In the steps that you take, you're being sanctified. But here's the good one is that if you don't take the step and you stay complacent and you stay in your luxury seat and lay back, right? How is sanctification happening? No, you got to walk. You got to step. You got to go into the unknown and you got to allow your faith to uprise in yourself. And in that, God will have glory through you. Even through your rebelliousness, even through your doubtfulness, God will do and put certain circumstances in your life so that you can come, become aware of them, so that you can overcome them by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen? Yep. So that's a good thing. Sanctification is actually for the saints and the saints alone. 
If we flip it, no, that's not good. Because we're here to edify one another. And ideally is, yes, we need to know God's thoughts and we got to know God's ways. But the reality of it is God loves his children. Say, God loves me. God loves me. And when you're his child and born again, he truly, truly cares for the best of each one of us, including myself. Like his discipline is good. I like this definition as well. We're going to continue on the definition. We'll get to the scripture right now. So that was sanctified, set apart. We've been set apart. To sanctify means this, to be set apart, and I like this portion of it, for a special use. Say special. Special. Yes, God wants to use each one of us in this room for a special use unto him. When we're saying the living sacrifice, when that word came forth, that's what God wants. He wants us to be a living sacrifice unto him in all our ways. He wants to use you as a special tool and purpose, but not just a tool. That sounds kind of hard, right? But if you're a mechanic, you're like, oh, man, a tool? Those things get dirty. But let me tell you what, a lot of those tools last a long time. And some of them have a lifetime warranty on them. See, we have a lifetime warranty. We do. And even if it gets hard and it gets dirty and all these different things, at the end of the day, nothing can separate us from the love of God. No demon in hell, no principality, nothing can separate us from God. Amen? Amen. So be the tool that God wants you to be. For sure. He wants you to be a tool. Maybe it's not just that type of tool, right? Oops. Maybe it's not that type of tool. Maybe he wants you to be an instrument. Like, when I say a tool, like, there's ways of fixing things, amen? Like your washer breaks down, nowadays you can watch YouTube and you can play a video and it'll tell you step by step, oh, you need a wrench, or oh, you need a Phillips screwdriver, or oh, you know, right? And it gives you step by step on how to fix the washer where you don't have to spend all kinds of crazy money and you can fix it yourself. Well, in that, there's step by step instructions for us as believers to be able to grasp the reality, right? of how to fix oneself through the Spirit of God. So some of us can be tools unto other encouragers. That's all the Bible says, hey, if you're going to be encouraging, then encourage well. If you're going to be a giver, then give generous. If you're going to be, right, an oracle for God, then speak the things that God speaks to your heart and your soul and your spirit and release them. So that's where the instrument comes in place. There's trumpets, there's horns, there's shofars. Like at the end of the day, God just wants to blow through us to be used to save as many souls as possible. That's why the Bible says he's patient for our sake. But we get so caught up in all these other little things as believers that the devil tries to get us to drift away from what the real purpose is. The real purpose is for us to love and cover people's sins in him and be the tool to guide them and to be able to love upon them so that they may be transformed and called into the kingdom of God. And then at some point when the tool don't fit no more, then you just got to move on to the, 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 the nut or the bolt that will fit to your tool. <laughs> because sometimes we force things and then they snap and they break. That's good. That's good. Those are things that are just flowing to my mind right now. I think about it. Robert, you know, Brother Robert, you put a wrench to a bolt and you tighten it too hard, you just might snap that thing, right? So us as tools, we have to be sensitive with the Holy Spirit telling us that, hey, you're tightening too much on that person. You're just beating them with the Bible too much. Like, back off a little bit. Give it a little bit of gap. You know, open it up again. Because if not, you keep pressing, that thing's going to snap. And then you got to go back to Home Depot. Then you got to go back to, right? And you got to get that special tool and re-drill the bit. It's a lot of work for those that know what I'm talking about. So now, as a tool that you are, and made a person snap because you beat him with the Bible, right? This isn't a this isn't a bad teaching. It's a good teaching because <laughs> God is good. I'm gonna flow with it because it's it's really true. That is, it is. If we beat somebody so hard with the Bible and just pin on all their sins in which our sins were the same, <coughs> we literally can snap that person where they don't want to receive Christ and they want to reject Him for many many years until the Lord softens their heart. 
But then us as people and individuals were running around like, oh, what did I do, right? This isn't to anybody. It's just what the Lord's put in my heart. What do we do? And then we try to fix the situation. And a lot of times what I hear at the shop is, man, I've already tried the Lord. I've been to church. I've been hurt. We're hypocrites. All these different things, right? It's true. So the Lord just wants us to recognize today that you're being sanctified and don't believe the lie of the enemy. You've been set apart for the kingdom of God. You're a tool or an instrument. And if you're a tool, you can fix things and you can tighten things where they're loose and you can do things as a tool for the Lord. Amen? Amen. And as an instrument, you can blow life into people. That's all we did today at the altar. The Lord spoke to the individual's hearts. They came forth. All we said, Brother Mono, come down from the altar, bro, and pray over this brother. Pray over this brother. Why? Because he's an instrument. The Lord's blowing through him. He's blowing into that individual. That individual's being filled and receives what God has for them. Then we did the same thing with Pastor Ross. Pastor Ross, you pray over the woman, you pray over the woman, right? Release what God has for you, for them, through you as an instrument. You have to blow in a trumpet to make sound. You have to blow in a chauffeur to make sound. And it gets tricky, too, because you got to know how to place those lips on the trumpet or the chauffeur. Because if you don't place your lips correctly on the chauffeur or the trumpet, it's going to make a funny sound. It may not even come out. So as believers, you're being sanctified and learning the ways of God. And you're learning to hear the voice of the Lord. So that when he uses you and says, speak life into somebody, you have to adjust. I won't say your lips, but you have to adjust your ear to tune into what the Spirit is saying. So you can blow into that person with what God wants to say. That's right. That's right. That's why sometimes uh, we get anxious. Eh? Pastor Andrew gets anxious, right? I do. Sometimes I start screaming and doing all kinds of crazy things, but it's for the Lord. But at, at, at times when I get to that point, I have to learn to settle my spirit, clear my mind, and allow the spirit to use me. And it's the same thing for all of us. Say tool. tool. Say instrument. instrument. And then tonight when you go into prayer, say, Lord, which one am I? And don't be surprised when he says you're both. I was just trying to distinguish two different circumstances but the reality is you are made in the fullness of Christ Jesus you are a whole and you can do all things through Christ Jesus right that means you can be the tool and you can be the instrument and not only that you can be the servant as well amen God is good so these are some more notes God sanctified us for special use he set us apart from sin and the world. All believers enter the state when they are born again and set apart. These are my notes. Tell my neighbor I'm set apart. And you have to say, I'm not part of this. I'm not of this world. You know, just say this. I'm a citizen of heaven. You don't need a green card. You don't need a passport. You get what I'm saying? You are a citizen of heaven the moment you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ himself by faith. And the moment you get filled with the Holy Spirit, automatically, automatically you become a child of the Most High. Amen? Yes. Okay, let's turn our Bibles this morning to John. Four minutes on time. Ooh, how'd that happen? Good or bad? Good. Did we start early? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. We might get out of here early today on 103 temperature, right? Or whatever that looks like. John chapter 17, verse 16 and 19. Or oh, I'm sorry, 16 through 19. Brother Moses, can you read out of the New King James Version? John chapter 17, verse 16 through 19. Say amen if you're there. Amen. Amen. All right, we got one amen. Praise God. Amen. They are not of this world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. Amen. Later on, dig a little bit deeper into those scriptures right there. Because I like the last portion where he says, I, for their sakes, that means for our sakes, Jesus himself 
sanctified himself upon that cross, right? By the truth that it may be revealed that death can't hold him down. Those are my words right now. My words not coming from the Lord. I'm just saying death could not hold Jesus down. That means us that are believers born again, death cannot hold us down. Amen. That's a good thing. Pastor Mark mentioned that. The believer and the Christian cannot die. Amen. Only the body. Right. But then that body will be given to us back again one day. Amen. With the glorified body. Amen. That's a whole other teaching. But let me read out the New Living Translation. They do not belong to this world any more than I do. He said, hey, my, my children that are born again, filled with the Spirit, do not belong to this world just as I don't belong to this world. Amen. Amen. And then look at 17 says this. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is true. 17 in the New King said, sanctify them by your truth. So this is the important part. If you're taking notes, is that to be sanctified, it has to be by God's truth, not the world's truth. And it starts right there with saying, hey, I'm not part of the kingdom of darkness no more. I'm not part of the world. That's why I said, hey, you're, you're an ambassador of Christ Jesus, meaning, hey, I'm not of this world, but I'm in it. Amen? Amen. But it starts right there with an understanding that you've been set aside for a special purpose and use in the kingdom of God. You have to believe it. Yes. That's where it starts. You have to believe it that, hey, this was me, full of darkness, empty, dry, not cleansed, spirit was dead, right? But then when I became born again, got filled with living water, matter of fact, the Holy Spirit in me that's filling me up, I'm about halfway right there, right? Is actually bigger than this. Right? I'm being filled. You got to ask the Lord to fill you up. But what I'm saying is that you're being sanctified, okay? Where am I going with this word? Anyways, what I'm saying is this. The analogy is this. The old man is not bigger than the new man. The big man is filled with living water, the living word, and the truth. And the old man is the small man now that had nothing but iniquities and foul things of the world. But God wipes that, cleanses that, and makes you like this. Yes. Look at that. That looks good. We probably could start a fire with that. Put it under the sun at the right angle, let the sun hit it, and it might become a magnifying glass. And if it becomes a magnifying glass, you'll start a fire. That's what God wants you to be a special use so you can start people to turn on fire for him. I had a conversation yesterday at the beach. And one of the brothers told me, hey, the Lord showed me that the church abroad has dry bones. And he asked me, do you understand what that means? Yes. And I said, I sure do. That there's no fire in the bones of the believer. They're dry. They're weary. They're getting tired. But God wants you in your sanctification to allow the light to penetrate your spirit and your soul and be a used tool and an instrument to burn into that dry bone in that dead land. Amen. Is this making sense? Yes. Like these are my own analogies. I'm like, man, Lord, you're good. I see it. Like you want to be a reflection. You want me to be a reflection of you with your glory to shine through me so that it can impact others so that they may be lit within their bones and they may come back alive. Right. It's almost like, what is it? Vitamin C or vitamin D? What's good for your bones? Both. Both? Amen. Praise the Lord. See? I need to take vitamins. <laughs> I thought it was milk. Vitamin D. <laughs> it's good for your bones. <laughs> so once you understand that you've been sanctified and set apart, right? Now that you know that you're no longer the old person, you're a new creation in Christ Jesus, and you're no longer part of darkness, but you're in the kingdom of light, a new creation in Christ Jesus, a child of the Most High. Now, the scripture says this, teach them your word, which is true. Make them holy by your truth. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is the truth. So once you grasp the reality that you are not of the world, that you are not 
in a dark place no more. Once you grab a hold of that, I've been sanctified, set apart for the Lord to be used for a special purpose. Now in that place, you have to start exercising the truth within yourself. What do you mean exercise? Exercise means this. You have to get into the word of God. You have to show up to fellowships. You have to show up to worship services. You have to show up to this place where you can renew your mind by the teachings of the word or by somebody being a tool or an instrument in your life, right? To be able to speak truth into you. It's the truth. And the more truth that you receive in your life, the more all the lies of the enemy and all those things will start to shrink in your life. I'm not saying they go away. They can. But what I'm saying is you come to the realization of the truth and the lie. And when you become aware of the truth, now you become responsible for the truth. And now you have action to do to use the truth and cover the lie with the truth. And God will sanctify you in that. Amen? Amen. So the word of God, say truth. 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 Say, I am being made holy. I am being made holy. And today, today I, declare I declare to read, to read more, of the Bible more of the Bible so that I may, so that I may be, sanctified be sanctified in my mind, in my, mind, in my, soul, in my soul, in my spirit, in my whole being. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Right? My notes. A follower of Jesus becomes pure and holy by believing and obeying the word. He or she has already received forgiveness. See, that's one of the lies from the devil. He'll say you're not forgiven. It's a lie from the pit of hell. If you've been born again, you've been set apart for a special use and you're renewing your mind in the way you are through the truth of the word of God, right? Your old ways become new. Everything becomes straight. The lie of the devil is that he will try to say that you have not been forgiven for all your wrongdoings. So you have to recognize that the Lord Jesus Christ forgives us. He's the only one that says you can be forgiven of your sins. Jesus not Mohammed. Let's not go there. There's only one. The way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. That's Christ Jesus. Nobody comes to the Father but through Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So don't let the devil lie to you. You've been forgiven. Say, I've been forgiven. I've been forgiven. That's a lie from the enemy. Says you're not forgiven. One more time, brother. You got a mic? It's a lie from the enemy when he says you're not forgiven. It's a lie from the enemy when you say when he says you're not forgiven. Here's some notes. Scriptures point out our sins. Scripture motivates us to confess our sins. Scripture renews our relationship with God. Scripture guides us back into the right path with God. Amen. The truth of everything I just spoke right now is how you become sanctified. You read it? What? Fornication is a sin? No, I did all that all my life. Before my wife, Marlena. <laughs> right, well, Pastor Andrew, how can you get back there? You pagan, right? No, I'm saying before my prior life, yes, I did those things because I did not know who I was in Christ Jesus. And I was bound to darkness in my sin, living the only way and the best way that I possibly could under the control of Satan. That's harsh. 
But the moment that I became born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, set aside, sanctified, the Lord convicted me when I was fornicating with my wife prior to marriage, marriage right? You know, we're okay. Yeah. Like, prior to me, the Lord convicted me that I needed to marry her, and it took me 10 years. Because I said, I ain't never getting married again because I've been divorced once at 18 and my heart got broken and I ain't never getting married again because it's just a piece of paper. But that's what the world said. And then when I got set aside and, 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 and sanctified and the Lord started working in me and I just started feeling the goodness of the Lord and he started start shaping me up within, he started convicting me of it. He's like, you know that my daughter has a desire to be married do you know that your thought process is not my thought process? Did you know that that is a man-made, uh, ideally, or how do you say it, bro? Like a man-made thought that like they made that up. Oh, it's just a piece of paper, bro. You don't have to be married. Nah, it's just a piece of paper. That's made up from the world. Don't take this for the wrong way. The Lord is teaching us things today. He's teaching yes. me too. I'm teaching through my life experiences because that's all I can do. And I remember I was serving the Lord for about two years in. Maybe even three. And I used to battle with that. I'm like, nah, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I used to tell God, I will not do it. And I can't do it. And you know why? It's because I was broken at a young age. And the Lord said, no, 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 son. You must do it. I'm telling you, you should do it. And I'm like, no, but I don't want to do it. It's, it's just a piece of paper, right? But the Lord was like, no, son, you need to do it. Because you love me, right? I'm like, yeah. He's okay then. If you love me, obey my commandments. And it was pretty that simple. And one day I said, oh, Ask my wife. My son Gibby's in the back. He'll tell you. I didn't propose the proper way. Because <laughs> I was still battling that thing. Like I didn't get down on one knee. I didn't do all those things, right? I was just like, hey, babe, we've been together 10 years. I think it's time for us to get married. What do you think? <laughs> Ask her. Rude, wrong, obnoxious, right? But you know what? She was like, yeah. yeah. Like, Man, that's crazy, huh? <laughs> I don't know where all that came from but from the Lord, amen so there's no condemnation in Christ so what I'm saying is this that if you're not married, that's where you're at God reveal to you what you need to do within your situation, amen because you're being sanctified ideally is Jesus said that this is what Jesus said. He said, sick people need a doctor. Sure. We are some sick people. Yes. Without the Lord in our life. Thank you. That's the truth. I need a doctor. <laughs> you need a doctor? I need three. <laughs> the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I, right. there you go. I need all three doctors. Yeah. It starts with one, though. The Spirit of God in you. And then it leads into others, right? The Father and the Son. <laughs> Sorry, bro. I don't mean to do that. But it's good. We need one. Which is all three because they are three and one. Amen. So there's no condemnation. I truly love everybody in this room. And I'm not saying that to kind of get you to get steered up in the wrong way. No, the Lord's just speaking and saying, hey, at the end of the day, there's ways that are my ways that are not of the world. And don't recognize and hold on to the things of the world, but recognize and hold on to the things of truth. And when you start to understand and learn your, my ways and the truth of the Bible, who I am, because he's alive and well, Jesus speaks through his word. You'll be sanctified in all areas of your life where you have shortcomings. Your shortcomings will start to fall off because you'll be commanded to obey his truth. Does that make sense? Yeah. I always remind myself when I want to be disobedient to the Lord. 
And that's what I spoke to you guys is that, hey, if you love me, you'll obey my commandments. And I truly do love the Lord in my shortcomings. I love the Lord. And I have to remind that, that scripture to myself. If you love me, you'll obey my commandments. And that's what always gets me. The Holy Spirit always gets me in that right there. I do love him. But that person just gets on my nerves. <laughs> right? We're all human in it, right? It could be a family member. It could be people can get on your nerves. But in the sanctification of Christ Jesus, in the fullness of who he is, you can learn through the truth of God that you are dead to all the things of the realm of the world and all those demonic things that are not of God. You, you can learn to not be intimidated. You can learn to walk fearless. Amen. You can learn to be victorious. Amen. You can learn to be con a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Yes. You can learn to not, right, allow the lie of the devil to penetrate your heart. That's all through sanctification. See, that's what we need as believers is just to grow in the Lord. Just to slow down in this fast place uh, in the world right now where everything's going crazy with AI and YouTube and videos, right? Like, it's, it's moving really fast, but for us and for our own sake, for Christ Jesus' sake and the church and those that need to be saved, we just have to slow down a little bit. Yes. We do. And learn to be sensitive to the Spirit of God. Learn to hear His voice. Where you don't doubt it and learn to step out in faith and accomplish what he wants as a special tool amen? amen so the scripture points out our sins the scripture motivates us to confess our sins the scripture renews our relationship with god right you, you grow a stronger relationship with knowing who he is and who his ways are right, right. and then he'll guide you back when we when we have shortcomings that's how good our father is He'll guide you back to the scripture. Say, no, son, it's okay. There's no condemnation in me. Don't beat yourself up. I'm faithful and just to forgive you for sins. Right. Just repent, turn from it, recognize it. Don't do it again. And if you do it a second time, that's okay. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to forgive you and justify you one more time. But learn from it. Because if you don't learn from it, you know, there might be a little bit of chastising that takes place. I'm like, oh, Lord, I don't like chastising. <laughs> Nobody likes chastising, right? Discipline. Nobody likes discipline. Nobody likes discipline. I don't think there's one person that truly can say, I love discipline. Okay, let's turn the Bible to 1 Corinthians. Chapter 15. Chapter 1, verse 30. First Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 30. And the reason I pulled this verse up before Brother Moses reads it is that when we when when we become like a living sacrifice for him, I don't know if we really truly yeah we did. I give myself to you so you can use me. I give myself to you, right? We sing that with our heart at the altar. Read the scripture, bro, before I start. But of him you are in Christ Jesus. But of who? Him. Him. Who's him? God. <laughs> it says right there in the scripture, Christ. Go ahead. But of him you are in Christ Jesus. Mm. Who became for us wisdom from God? Go back one more time, right there, right there. One more time, one more time. Who became for us wisdom from God mm -hmm. and righteousness and sanctification and redemption? Man. Oh my Lord, that's some good stuff. <coughs> if you want some spiritual advisory, that's a good scripture to study for 30 days straight. But of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us what? Wisdom. Some of us, not in this room, but in La La Land, Facebook land, right? 
some of us aren't wise because we're using our natural thinking, the things we were taught of the past. But the scriptures teach us that of him that you are in Christ Jesus who became for us wisdom for God. From God. Let me read the New Living Translation. God has united you with Christ Jesus for our benefit. God made him to be wisdom in itself. Holy Spirit. Right there. Paper. The wisdom of the world. It's just a piece of paper. Holy Spirit, true, right there. <laughs> the wisdom of the world is foolish. And it's foolishness. But the wisdom of God is righteousness, pure and holy. So the moment that you're being sanctified, the Lord just starts to speak. But if we listen, we have the best wisdom of all from God. This is why it says, don't be led by your heart. Matter of fact, don't be led by your mind, but be led by the Holy Spirit. Step with the Holy Spirit. Walk with the Holy Spirit. We're to be led by the Spirit of God because if we're led by the Spirit of God, God's wisdom abounds in you and will Give you ideas of business. Give you ideas of growth. Give you ideas of marriage. Give you ideas of these people don't belong to me, around me. Give me ideas of, like, you get what I'm saying? Like, that's the wisdom of God in here that you have to in tune your ear to. I don't know. Maybe go buy one of those skulls you put in here and just put it on your belly and see if you can hear the Holy Spirit. I don't know. Right? Like, because he's there and the wisdom of the kingdom of God is in you. But maybe you do just buy some and put this and Lord, you in there? Like, hey, speak to me. Like, I don't know how you got to get to that place, but you got to get to that place where you can be led by the wisdom that comes from God. Yeah. Right? It says in the scripture, but of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God. And then the good news, it says, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. Look at the new living. Christ made us right, say right. Right. With God. With God. And it says he made us, say pure. Pure. And then it says, and holy. And holy. And then in the new living, it says, and he freed us from sin. Say, I'm free, I'm free. From, sin. from sin. Say, I'm no longer bound, no longer bound to, sin. to sin. But sin, but sin is, bound is bound to the Holy Spirit. To the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's in Christ Jesus. You know what I mean? The, some notes. The sanctification mentioned in this verse is a once forever separation of unbelievers onto God, grafted into the body of Christ, grafted into the body of Christ. All these things of him were for us from God so that we may be brought back to the Father, so that we may be made pure and holy, walking this walk out, and our crooked path has been made right. Those are just some notes. In my notes, I put, while we are positionally holy, right? Because we've been put in a position set apart, special use, right? I put, while we are positionally holy, set apart, free from every sin by the blood of Jesus. And then right underneath, I put this, yet we still sin. Every man falls short from the glory of God. Let every man be a liar but God. So that's just something that we have to walk out and overcome by the Spirit of God and be victorious and conquer that thing, whatever area in your life that you're dealing with. 
There's some people that can just be liars, period. Like everything they say is a lie, right? They, they lose trust of people because they glide their way through life. And all of a sudden, when they come with the real issue, it's like, oh, bro, I, ah, I cut it out. You know what I mean? Like, you ain't telling the truth, right? I'm just saying that's an issue of the world that's bound in your nature of sin, and your mind's been dealt with it, which becomes a stronghold. But we need the Lord, the Holy Spirit, to, to break those things and free us from those things. Amen? Yeah. So, yes, we can still sin as Christians. I'm not, I'm not condoning it, meaning like, go sin. No. I'm saying recognize the sin by the Spirit of God and ask the Lord to give you strength to conquer that thing. Whatever it is. He'll honor it. I believe he'll, he'll free you from it. He freed me from it. Not everything, right, that I have shortcomings on. But like the drug abuse and the alcohol abuse and all those things, he truly freed me from it. And if he can do it for me, I know he can do it for anybody. Right? There's areas in each one of your lives, right, Sister Yvonne? Yeah. I see you shaking your head like, yeah, yeah. Like, if he can do it for Sister Yvonne, he can do it for anybody. God is powerful. He's the Almighty. There's no one like him. It's just recognizing the sin in our life and asking the Lord to take it from us. Sometimes it don't feel good, and that's okay. Because those who reap a harvest of tears will reap a harvest of joy. Sometimes you just got to cry that thing out on that eating carpet. Like sometimes you just got to go before the Lord and say, Lord, help me. I tried, but I continued. Oh, Lord, help me. I, I pushed it back, but it comes back. Lord, help me. Like you need to shed some tears. And over time, those tears will turn into a harvest of joy in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Let's see. I'll, I'll, I'll prove that one to you really quick through the scripture. First John chapter 1, verse 10. We're almost wrapping up. First John chapter 1, verse 10. You know, it amazes me how, how the word of God and how God works. Like some people will think that he actually contradicts himself, but that's not necessarily true. They just kind of weave their way in and everything kind of weaves together. And it all, it all, it's hard to explain. Like you read one scripture and you're like, ah, oh, but, but then when you get a full understanding of it, when it comes to the depthness of what it is, you're like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. Go ahead, Lord. It says, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Let's go back. We'll go through 8 through 10. I just seen it right now. 1 John yeah. chapter 1, verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful Amen. and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. That part's harsh. God is love. But if you say we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And his word is not in you. You guys heard of tough love? Yeah. Sometimes it's a little bit tough in the Lord. He loves you so much that he'll shake you up a little bit. To get you to recognize that you truly are a sinner and need a savior. Not one of us in the room, including Pastor Andrew, is sinless and has never sinned. Otherwise, I'd be deceiving myself. And that tells me, because I truly believe that, that the word of God is not in me. But I know I'm a sinner. I know I fall short. I know I have anger, anger issues. I know that when the Lord says to do something, sometimes I'll be rebellious and don't do it. I know sometimes the Lord says, speak to that person. I'm tired and I don't want to do it. I'm just saying, I know. I can admit it. And I confess those things before the throne room. And I said, Lord, 
I know you told me this at the shop. I know you told me this at Stater Brothers in line, and I did not do it. Forgive me, because I'm a sinner saved by grace. A new creation that recognized that I need a Savior in my life to save me from all those areas and where I fall short. I'm not stuck as a sinner or bound to being a sinner or a slave to sin because I've been free through the blood of Jesus. But those tendencies can come up and those tendencies can arise and the flesh can come alive and you can be led by the tendencies and the circumstances in the flesh and doing the opposite of what the Spirit is saying. Does that make sense? Yeah. Just tell your neighbor, I need a Savior. Say, I need Jesus. But I need more of Jesus. I need more of You need more of Jesus. I need more of Jesus. Thank God for his grace and mercy, right? It's his grace. It's mercy. Grace, like we don't deserve it. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. Read the story in the book of Acts that somebody tried to purchase the power of the Holy Spirit. The dude got rebuked. We don't deserve it. We don't deserve it, right? You have to get that there. He had like, man, I don't deserve what God has done for me by choosing me out of this place. He could just left me in the muddy mud. He could have just left me in the dark place in a dark cave where I felt like I was all in my lonesome. He could have just left me being tormented by demons. He could have just left me being tormented by addiction. He could have just left me in that place all by myself, consumed by the enemy and the foul spirits of this world. But he did not do that. He set me free. Man. Thank you, Jesus. I don't deserve it. I was lost. But now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. I was deaf, but now I hear. Man, that's a good God. That's a good God. My ears should have, yeah, clap for Jesus. Because we hear from the Lord, we see from the Lord, we recognize that we couldn't do what He can do. Amen? We'll wrap up this. Somebody's texting me. Mm. <laughs> Amen. Second Peter chapter three. Second Peter chapter three. Verse eighteen. Let's go 17 and 18. Actually, we'll go 17 and 18 there. And my notes only had 18, but I, it's good to go back a little bit. Second Peter 3, 17 and 18. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. To him be the glory. But look what it says. To grow in what? Grace and knowledge. To grow in grace and knowledge. The New Living reads it like this. So be on guard. Then you will. So be on guard. Then you will not be carried away by the errors of these wicked people and lose your own secure footing. Be on guard. The new King James Version says, "Beware, lest you fall from your own steadfast." The reason I re read that is because we have to grow in the knowledge of Christ Jesus, and it's only by the grace of God that we have the capability of growing in that area, in the knowing and the knowledge of who He is. It's only by God's grace that that can happen. It's only by the wisdom of God that can give us an understanding. The wisdom and the Holy Spirit will give you an understanding 
of the knowledge of what the scriptures teach. Because I remember there was a time in my life when I first came to the Lord, so don't be discouraged. Anybody that's baby Christians, right? We'll just say baby Christians. That's okay. Like somebody that needs milk, leche, right? I need leche too. I need a leche. I'm just saying. And then you move on to, you know, more meat, more word, like stronger understanding. Like the reality of it is, is that we grow by God's grace in the knowledge of who he is by reading the word. And in that you'll become sanctified and you'll overcome all the things of the old man, which you are in a new creation in Christ Jesus by the strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen? So by the Holy Spirit is the only way that you can conquer all the old things of the old man and the things of the flesh. It's by the Spirit and the Spirit alone. You can't do it by might and you can't do it by your own power or your own strength. It's the Spirit of God alone. So you have to get in tune with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. The center feet. I like that. Be on guard. Then you will not be carried away by the errors of the wicked people and lose your own secure footing. Rather, you must grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All glory to Him, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Close your eyes. I'm just going to pray us out. So, Father, we come in your Son's name, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Chain Breaker, the Liberator. Yes. We thank you for this word. Yes. We thank you, Father, that we are being sanctified every day of our life. We thank you that we have the Bible before us. We thank you, Lord, that we have the liberty here in the United States to purchase as many as Bibles as we need. We thank you for liberty, Lord, that we can buy one translation, the New King's James Version, the King's James Version, the New Living Translation, whatever that may look like, Lord, so that we may be able to read the truth of the kingdom of God. Amen. And I pray, Lord, by your Holy Spirit that indwelleth in me, that you release your power by your spirit to overcome the flesh, the lies of the enemy, and all the shortcomings of all our areas in our life when we fall short by sinning against you. Yes, God. But in the sin against you, that your spirit will bring it up through dreams, even through an image in the mind. But in that quiet place, Lord, we will recognize where we fall short. And we thank you, God, that you are faithful and just to forgive us of each one of our sins. But most of all, God, in this walk with you, Holy Spirit, we are growing and we are learning the foreknowledge of who you are in our lives. So, Father, I release grace upon your children, grace upon grace, and I release, God, the knowing and the understanding of scripture from this day forth. Release revelations. Release the understandings of the word of God that it may be deeper and abound more deeper within the spirit and the soul. So we bless thee, Christ Jesus. We love you. We honor you. And we're living sacrifices for thee. Use us as tools. Use us as instruments. Use us as servants and bless your children all the days of their life. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. There's snacks in the back. Give the Lord a clap and amen. Don't forget Saturday, Laughter for All, Comedy Club.